what's so interesting is when people outside of Sweden they look at this and they say, "Wow, okay, these are these you have make these mistakes, you have these like very structural flaws um, that are beyond repair." It seems like so. For example, you know, people talk about the Nobel Prize is very Eurocentric, and you know, and like these structural flaws, and they say, "Okay, probably we shouldn't." Keep this anymore, and when I see this, I I feel like we should keep it because first of all, we we still have this belief, right, that you know, like this type of neutral and gold standard of literature should somehow still be we strive towards it, even though it seems like an impossible task. We should still strive towards this ideal, and I really think that the the Swedish Academy and Nobel Prize represents that ideal. Do do you think that's also something the the Swedes um, are thinking about? Like they have this responsibility? Yes, I think that that they feel this responsibility, and they're very very much. Um, they do understand that there are certain flaws within within the academy. Also, when it comes to structural things, like for instance, I mean, we we are so in desperate need of translated literature uh, because the academy, as you know. The academy get all kinds of informations from all over the world. Different um, uh, pen associations, uh, writers associations, uh, former Nobel laureates can promote people they think should have the Nobel Prize. So they can they can uh, point out candidates worthy of the prize. Uh, and sometimes, I mean, we have writers in languages we can't read in Sweden. And then the the academy can order translations in order to be able to read this certain writer who is promoted by someone they trust. So, for instance, Nagib Mafus, the Egyptian writer, uh, didn't have one single work translated into Swedish. But the Swedish Academy understood that the Arab the Arabic speaking world was almost unified in its strive to <laughs> to get the academy to understand. What an enormously important writer Mafus was. So, um, in order to understand Mafus, they had him translated in, I think, four or five works, and then they succeeded in finding works in some other language that they could read. But this, of course, I mean, there are limits within the academy. The academy has members who can read many Western languages, not so many. Asian or African languages, though, and this, of course, well, one can understand that the weight, the overweight for for Western literature is tremendous. So you have to do something about this, and the Academy is trying to work with this, and they have started to have a sort of network in the Swedish academic world where they have people picking up. Writers from different parts of the world, just in order to try to do something about this. And um, well, I think one choice which was a bit surprising for most of us was Gerner, last year's Nobel Prize laureate, whom almost nobody knew of in Sweden. And he is, of course, he's writing in English, which makes it much more easy. Uh, but even so, he was he is a, a Tanzanian or Zanzibarian writer, and we don't read many of those in Sweden. But the academy is is actually is in, in different ways struggling to to try to get some sort of a balance between the Western world and the world outside the West, and also between men and women, because the overweight in male writers is also very big, as you can see if you look at the list of Nobel laureates.